Hi there, I'm Paul, welcome back. And during my last video, we were talking about beam divergence and Olympus has just come up with something that we can use to try to combat that. And these are PAF or passive aperture focused wedges. Let's try them out. When we're talking about focusing with phased array, we're usually talking about it in the active aperture. So we usually focus at a depth or a sound path or a projected plane, or we don't focus at all. But what about the lateral direction across the beam width? Uh, there are uh, transducers that you can buy that are laterally focused. Typically, these are the small, low profile uh, boiler tube probes. And the bottom of the probe is actually uh, slightly concave and it will uh, try to uh, focus the beam a little bit in the, uh, in the lateral direction. But if you're using regular transducers, on piping inspections with regular wedges, then you're still at the mercy of beam divergence. And uh, beam divergence is when the sound uh, leaves the probe and it comes down and it hits the ID and you can see the ID is convex. So it's gonna hit down here and then the beam kind of on reflection, it spreads out. And that can make things a little bit messy. What Olympus has come up with to try to counteract the effect of divergence is a passive aperture focus or PAF wedge. And just like it sounds, it uh, focuses the beam in the lateral direction as the transducer sits on this surface here and you can see the outside of the insert is shaped different than the inside. And this of course is going to try to focus the beam in the lateral or passive aperture. We're going to compare a regular wedge and a PAF wedge and in order to do that I've got this four and a half inch OD pipe sample and it has some through wall holes drilled in it. There's some closely spaced ones and then a couple that are spaced a little bit further apart. I have a regular A31 uh, four and a half inch AOD wedge attached to that. I've got a five megahertz 32 element probe. I've got my mini wheel encoder so we can measure things. And of course I have the PAF wedge. Let's get started. Got the water running. I'll let you know about my setup. I'm running 45 to 70 degrees with a half degree increment. And I did do a quick uh, two point TCG using the three to five inch ERVW block. And I uh, did it on the 10 millimeter step using the half T side drilled hole. I've set up my focusing depth at one and a half T and at the 55 degree angle, we are first gonna hit the bottom corner trap of the through holes. And then I'm gonna swipe past all of those, save the file and then do it again and hit the top corner trap of the through hole. So at the OD and then we'll switch wedges and see what happens. <laughs> Now that we've finished with the acquisition and the sun isn't in my face anymore, we can take the data off of the Veo and put it into UT Studio and take a look. The first thing we need to point out is that I am going to use an extraction cursor and that is this sort of orange box in the upper left hand side that's boxing in the indication that I'm interested in. In this case, I'm gonna look at the ID corner trap of the through wall holes. So we're at the end of the first leg and uh, the extraction cursor uh, with sauna test is essentially a way of using a familiar uh, true depth gate. So you've got a gate start and a gate end. We're used to seeing those go across our S scan, but sometimes there's things that are off to the side of the S scan that show up in our signal when we gate it that way. And we wish we could get rid of that. And that's what the extraction cursor is for. It allows us to draw a box. So we only gate the stuff in here. So it's gating this way and gating that way. And the nice thing about using an extraction cursor is that we can then project a top view and an end view or side view uh, going this way. So in this case, I'm going to use a end view uh, going this way. And this is a view of that signal or that area on the S scan throughout the entire scan length. So at the beginning of the end view here at the top, you'll see all the closely spaced holes and you can see that with the regular wedge, we don't have really good lateral resolution. That's because of the beam divergence. The signals from these through wall holes are actually a corner trap on a vertical surface. So they're not a really great signal to look at in the first place. Now let's switch to the PAF wedge. You can see here, there's a huge improvement on the PAF wedge signal. Uh, not only do we have perfect resolution on the uh, widely spaced holes at the bottom of the end view, but we also have perfect resolution of even the closely spaced holes that are probably only about five millimeters apart, which tells us the beam width now has been shrunk to less than five millimeters wide. Now let's take a look at the OD signals. 
the regular wedge at the end of the second leg when it hits the OD corner trap of those holes looks okay and that's to be expected because the ID causes a divergence but the OD is concave and it causes a convergence so it undoes a little bit of the damage that the ID caused. Now if we switch over to the PAF wedge which is laterally focused it still offers an improvement. You can see there is really good separation between those whole signals and at this sound path distance it still makes a difference. In UT testing we're at the mercy of beam spread and the narrower you can make your beam at the point of interest the better. We have better lateral resolution so the ability to better resolve things along the length of the scan and a better ability to size the length of flaws and in this case the PAF wedges are improving the lateral beam spread making it narrower and it definitely improves our signal. If you like this video and you want to see more, please hit the like and subscribe buttons and I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.